Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing room acoustics and in this case electrical when wiring your home recording studio. My name is Wilson Harwood and I am a soundproof studio designer as well as an acoustician based in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I'm going to talk all about different ways to get clean, reliable power in your home recording studio. And this is something that often gets overlooked as we obsess over acoustics or we obsess over sound isolation and we may not even think about electrical. And one thing is, is electrical is complicated. Uh, that's why it's usually left to an electrician. So in this video, I'm going to try to help you understand a little bit more about how to wire your studio and then also some options for cleaning up the power in your studio using separate units uh, called power conditioners. All right, before we jump in, if you're going down this journey uh, and you need some help, uh, I have a free soundproofing workshop that has helped probably thousands of people at this point with designing and building their own home recording studio. You can watch it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, enough from me blabbering. Let's jump into the topic at hand, which is how to get clean, reliable power in your home recording studio. <laughs> Now I'm gonna to get to the gear, and I know everyone's obsessed with gear. Uh, it's just human nature in a lot of ways. But before we talk about the gear, the power conditioners, the UPSs, all these fancy things, transformers, blah, 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 I wanna talk about the fundamentals, the things that can really get you clean, reliable power before you even have to use stuff like that. And that is how to wire your studio correctly. So there's a few different options you have, but in general, I have some main tips that I give all of my clients who are building home recording studios on their electrical plans when I design their studios. And these tips include first, running all of your audio gear and your computer, and I'll get to that in a second, on one circuit. This means that you share a common ground going back to your electrical panel and that 15 amp or maybe even a 20 amp circuit, if needed, will power all the electrical equipment in your studio. This could also be two circuits that are still dedicated to just audio if you're running to multiple rooms. But the main point here is that all the audio outlets that will have any sort of gear connected to them will go to a single circuit and hence a single ground wire is the goal and that's going to give you that's going to reduce ground loops and it's also going to reduce uh, electrical inf interference and hums from things like lights um, motors that generate a 50 to 60 hertz hum from like hvac equipment things like that now i said that you should put your computer on on that same circuit and the reason is that it will help reduce ground loops as well although computers can potentially introduce a little bit of in interference as well and we'll get to that in a second that's where a power conditioner actually could be useful Number two related to that is that all of your lights and ideally your HVAC if possible are gonna all be on separate circuits. And by keeping all these circuits separate, again, we're reducing the interference that can happen between having lights and audio gear on the same circuit. And you're also reducing the possibility of ground loops. Third, I recommend that you, when installing that circuit for your audio, trying to keep it on one leg of your electrical panel. This is also called a phase at times and keeping your lighting and HVAC equipment on a separate leg. Now I will say this is a lot easier said than done because you need to balance your electrical panel and you simply telling your electrician that you're trying to achieve this goal is going to be better than not doing it. However, I do recognize that this is difficult to do in home studios. It's also difficult if you're running a 220 volt circuit, that takes up two circuits for your HVAC system, like mine, Minisplit does, um, that will have to cover two of the legs on your panel. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. These are just goals that we're trying to strive for to help clean up our power. For EMI reduction, it's always a good idea in general to run your electrical power and your audio cables at least one foot away from each other in the walls. And if they have to cross, always crossing at a 90 degree angle. And this includes ethernet cables that carry audio uh, as well. Now there is one option that is kind of the holy grail of wiring and studio design. And that is this concept called star grounding. 
Now, star grounding is a term that your electrician may or may not know. And if they're not familiar with it, it's often used in hospitals or high-end facilities where you need very clean power, AKA a recording studio. Now, the way that this works is basically you have single grounds. The grounds go directly from each audio outlet, each outlet that's gonna have audio gear in it, coming back to a separate ground that then goes into the earth near the electrical panel. This by nature isolates the grounds, which is the goal of our clean electrical system. Now, it's much more complicated than that, and I highly recommend doing more research on it, but if you can bring up a star grounding system with isolated receptacles, meaning even isolated grounds on the outlets themselves, this will help with getting a very clean power source to your studio. And it is something I am starting to recommend to my clients if it's cost effective and something their electrician is able to do. So now let's get into the actual gear and equipment you can use to help clean up power. On the top end of this list is going to be a transformer. So a transformer can be installed by an electrician when you're wiring your studio from the beginning, and you can use a transformer like the Sola HD right here that can give you reliable, clean condition power and protect your entire studio audio from electrical surges and spikes. So this can be a really good thing to invest in on the front end of your studio and attach it into your electrical plan uh, so that everything is protected and conditioned at the source. This is not something that I would recommend doing unless you have an electrician involved and you're able to figure out how to wire it properly. Otherwise, it may not give you the exact bang for your buck that you're looking for. However, if you're doing a studio from the ground up, this is something that I think would be worthwhile investing in. It's not the cheapest. It looks like just the unit itself can cost around $2,300, and that doesn't even include the labor for the electrician. Next up on our list are power conditioners. Now, power conditioners come in all shapes and sizes. Some of the most common brands are like Furman, which you've probably seen or heard of before in other recording studios. Now, a power conditioner, does exactly what it says, which is it conditions the power, meaning it cleans up what we call dirty power, which is power that has unequal wave forms, um, can help with EMI or radio, uh, electrical interference, RFI frequencies like that, like radio frequency interference. So it can do a lot of those things and there are varying degrees of complexity in these different models and obviously then also varying degrees of cost that you can invest in to get higher end power conditioners versus the lower end. But they all essentially do the same thing, which is try to clean up your signal. Now I will say a lot of these power conditioners, in fact, everyone on my list, I believe, does come with a built-in surge protector as well. And I think it's a pretty much a no-brainer to get a power conditioner that also protects with helps to protect with surge protection so that you get an all-in-one system that protects all of your equipment. Now, the first one I'm gonna mention here is probably the standard that you may have seen out and about in the world or in other home studios, which is the Furman 8x2. And this is gonna be a cheaper model. I saw it uh, recently on uh, Sweetwater for only about $80. And this is a 1U rack unit that offers eight plugs on the back, one on the front, and it will give you clean, reliable power and also surge protection to your instruments. And I'm sorry, I said instruments to your preamps, interfaces, computer, anything that you're using for your home recording studio that needs to be protected. Now, beyond power conditioners, there is something called a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. A UPS helps with keeping your system powered on and giving you enough time to save the project and power everything down correctly when there is a power outage. And so a lot of times if you've been working in a situation, which I have, this has happened to me many times, unfortunately, in this studio where I have a pretty bad power grid over here and I have a lot of outages. I would say there's probably 10 outages a year over here at least. And you could be working on some audio, some a project with a client, have the whole system just shut down. This could one, potentially cause damage to the units, but most importantly too, it could cause lost work. So you could be in the middle of a project, not have saved recently and lose all your work. 
And so this is something you definitely don't want to have to deal with. Uh, so having a UPS of some kind is great. And Furman actually makes a unit called the Furman F1500 UPS, which is also a power conditioner. And I think this is a great choice for pretty much any home studio if you have the budget, where you can use this as the main power supply for your studio. And then if you have any sort of surges or power outage, um, this thing will allow, give you some time. It'll give you a backup battery where you can then power down your system safely. So that looks like a great option to me. Now I wanna circle back around to another form of power conditioner, which is the balanced power conditioners. Now the category of balanced power conditioners means that they take a AC line, which usually has a hot leg and a neutral leg, and divides it up and taking 120 volts in the US here, for example, and dividing it into two 60 volt lines, creating what's known as the balanced power, hence dividing that 120 into two balanced lines. And this has the effect of giving you reliable, clean, steady voltage and steady electricity, which leads to better sounding music through your equipment ideally and so there is you know probably some debates out there whether the balanced power works better than a non-balanced power conditioner but in general these are considered higher end power conditioners and you spend the money for it the one of the most popular ones out there is the equitech model 1.5 r and this model is probably the most expensive on the list but it does offer high-end power conditioning, balanced power, surge protection from a reputable company called Equitech. If you're also looking for a competitor, we can go back to Furman and they have a similar option that also offers extremely high-end power conditioning and that unit is the Furman P2400AR. And I saw a few different prices out there, but I actually have a link, uh, an affiliate link uh, for Amazon where I saw it for less than $1,000. So that seems like a really good deal. So if you are looking for a power conditioner at the higher level, that is definitely one I would recommend. These power conditioners also should, while not being technically a UPS, I think they will safely shut down your equipment if they detect a unsafe environment for your gear. So in conclusion, I just threw a lot of stuff at you and your head might be spinning a little bit as mine has been through all of my electrical journeys in understanding how to wire studios. But the more I learn, the better I have an understanding of generally what you're trying to do. And if you take it from a higher level aspect, when you're wiring a studio from the beginning, like all of my clients are doing when we're building soundproof studios, you know, we're taking everything down to the studs. We can easily run wires from an electrical panel. You know, I'm always trying to get them to either use the star grounding system, if possible, um, or do all the things and or do all the things I mentioned with the practical tips of having separate circuits, of trying to keep distance between our electrical wires and our audio wires, and then trying to deal with other things like low voltage um, wiring, things like that. So there's a lot to take into account when we're designing a studio and what happens in the walls with our electrical and audio lines is no different. We really wanna plan that out carefully. But the main thing is I would say use, you know, those techniques first, then if you can afford a transformer that both conditions and protects your entire system from power surges, great. I think that would be a great addition to your system. Um, if you can't afford that or don't want to add a transformer like the Sola HD, you can certainly have just simple um, surge protectors that are higher quality on all your equipment. That is definitely necessary. Uh, and if you want to get a power conditioner, I think they're maybe a little bit overrated if you do everything else I'm talking about, but they certainly can't hurt. But I say this because I truly believe in, in my studio, I don't have a power conditioner and everything's been fine. Um, I just use surge protectors to help with the, uh, <laughs> the many, many blackouts I've had here. Um, and so far everything's been good, knock on wood. But you know, you can get these power conditioners and they may make your speakers sound better or the preamp sound better and that'd be awesome. But I, it's just one of those things where you'd have to really A, B test it to really know. So before you spend $2,000 on a power conditioner, maybe try some other options first uh, and see if that's really necessary. If you have the budget and you wanna spend two to $3,000 just on your power, 
go for it. I mean, it can't hurt, that's for sure. Um, so that's sort of my main takeaway with this is I always say don't uh, fix a problem you don't have. So if you don't have ground loops, hums, noise, dirty power, brownouts, blackouts, if you don't have these issues, then you may not need all these fancy electrical devices and you might be pulled into it like everything we do in studio design, which is like, we're so nervous about things working correctly that we end up over-researching, over-analyzing, and never actually <laughs> finalizing and finishing our project. So that leads me to my last uh, point here, which is if you need help, on a higher level, if you need a professional to help you, I'm always there available for higher end projects um, where you value the uh, help of a designer, someone who's been doing this full time and done well over 30 studios now. Um, and I'm learning every day all the time, so they're getting better and better. Um, you can always reach out for a soundproof clarity call on my website at soundproofyourstudio.com. And if you still want to, you're not ready for that or you don't have the budget, I highly recommend still checking out the soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop, where I just give everything away for free. I'm always just trying to help you guys on that DIY level, understand and build studios. So you don't have to go through the headaches that I had when I built my studio. Uh, so hopefully we're all growing and getting better at studio design and producing better and better music and just living our best life. And that is the goal of this channel. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you all so much. Uh, leave comments. I try to answer them here, there, or maybe other people in the community can answer them for you. And uh, I will see you all next week with more information on how to build your dream home recording studio. All right. Again, I'm Wilson Harwood, a studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville, and I will see you next week.